that I, excuse me, okay, that identifies the rim of the creek. You can see it right here. You have it upside down, but it, this is what T.G. Miller's identify as the rim of the, of the creek. And you can see here with the various grade lines that that goes down quite a ways um, to the creek itself. So this is the rim. That is correct. Yep. <clears throat> Basically, the original creek line, and this is not unusual. You go back, and I'm sure T.G. Miller's has run into this a lot, but uh, you go back years and years ago that people established their property lines based on the center line of the creek. And they wanted both people to have equal you know, use and access to the creek. But also okay. over history, creeks change. That's what makes it more difficult. Um, but you can see right here is the six mile uh, property lines on this page uh, are quite a ways down from the rim of that creek. And uh, so anyways, the new Zoning regulation identifies the riparian buffer as being a 75 foot setback from the rim of the creek. And that's what the red line is on this property that I, I calculated out and put in there. And you realize there's only about a 15 to 20 foot space left on this whole property to do something. And therefore, the information on the first page. Can I ask a clarifying question? Sure. So when I look at this map, I see the purple line, which is the rim of the creek. Yeah. I see the 75 foot spacing, yeah. but the 75 foot spacing and the purple line come together. Well, it just basically, the, mm -hmm. to write a 75 foot thing here, it just basically, I just went, went back out to a common space here, only from the standpoint is that the main thing I am trying to establish is the fact that <coughs> this <coughs> property was definitely affected severely by the 75 foot setback in general. And that at some point, all we're looking at is that it is, is 75% or more of this total lot. That's what the front page is about. Yep. Yes, yep. affected by the restrictions on this parcel. And once that happens, then basically sort of a lot of this stuff goes away because what we're looking at now is that the Wetzels have the privilege to come before this board to discuss the fact that their, their property is adversely affected by the latest zoning. And there is a statement right in the zoning law that says if a property is affected by more than 75% or 75 of, of a current zoning requirement, then they have the right to seek a, an opportunity to build anyways. Because before this new zoning law came into play, they had the right to build on this lot. And as you can see on the bottom of this, where this property line is, was also one of the original lines for the center line of the stream. The previous 2007 law said 50 feet from the stream. So that would have still put it in the area of the bank as opposed to now gobbling up the, the plateau that's there so that there's hardly any land left to build on. Is that clear to everybody? <clears throat> Other than there's a blue line. Well, this. I'll explain the blue line in a second. Okay. Okay. The blue line is an area here that down on the projected area of disturbance because there's another requirement that said if you have between a half acre and an acre, then you have to start getting special DEC permits <coughs> for, the, for the amount of land disturbance. Um, I took a look at that and I basically did an enlarged space here that encompasses all of uh, the engineer's requirement for the septic system as well as additional uh, grading over in here and said, okay, that area is the septic field with both initial and future and additional grading of 10,264 square feet. 
Uh, also, the relocated stormwater system off the Brooklyndale Road, so that's another 504 square feet. And then the dwelling itself, plus the area around the dwelling is required in order to put the foundation in. And that comes out to a grand total of 14,622 square feet, which still also totals up only to 0.336 acres, which is below the half acre, which is the minimum threshold for um, requiring additional permitting. <coughs> any questions about that? Just Are there any other additional DEC requirements because of proximity to the creek? Uh, I don't, from, I don't uh, see any additional so. ones, but I, I mentioned to the Wetzels that they have their engineer come here tonight, and he is here. <laughs> that um, basically, uh, I'm going to let them talk in more detail because when they laid out their septic system, they took into consideration a number of additional factors, and that's what the third page of my analysis is very briefly, and that is the location of all both active and inactive wells that have an impact on the site, which make it even more restrictive for anybody to be able to uh, place a septic system and a house and a well far enough away where it can work within the requirements of uh, the health department. So basically that's all I have to say. And I'm basically just was clarifying how the statistics on the front page came to be that we have them here tonight. And uh, then I opened I open that up for questions to me anyways. And at that this point, then I would open it up also to Mr. Drew, the architect, and Mr. Herrick from uh, Teaching Miller Engineers to uh, further define the information that they utilized in order to site the building. So, so Brian, as a stormwater um, officer for the town as well, yes. You were saying that there's no uh, sweat for stormwater management plan. No, no, we fall below the threshold for those. Now, when you call about the, uh, there is basically there is a, a simple stormwater management plan that <laughs> needs to be done, but basically that was done by TG engineers when they were working on trying to find a location for the septic field. They relocated the stormwater drainage from um, Brookendale Road. And that is sort of included in my category of disturbance of land. But they also took care of the only place that they had at their disposal to uh, um, construct the septic system and future backup set the septic system. So I felt as the zoning officer and stormwater manager that basically their work satisfied the simplest of stormwater management plans. They also identified a location on their, their plan and the bigger one may show it better where they have a uh, silt fence to protect the stream during all the construction. and recontouring of the land. Okay. Um, uh, so Dave, have you checked in with DEC? Is there, are there any other, or do you know of any requirements for I'm not aware of any other any other for yes yeah, permitting or anything else as a proximity. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um Dave Eric, is DEC aware of this project? I have not had any reason to communicate with Theoretically, it's outside their jurisdiction because it's a little louder. Theoretically, it is outside of their jurisdiction because it does not fall within the constraints of where they have to have it from any Apple
Um, I'm not seeing. whether or not we need to do a 239 review with the county for <clears throat> abbreviated site plan review. Do you mean in the zoning law? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think there is. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to think of anything else that we need to do as far as, you know, notifying appropriate agencies or whatever. Yeah. But if it doesn't require. In the memo from um, Cliff Babson, it says um, if it is less than 45 degrees, the, the bank steepness, then you need DEC permit to build within 50 feet. In any case, I will issue the permit contingent on DEC approval. So I don't know what the slope is. We, uh, oh, it's actually on the drawing, the C-102 drawing. Uh -huh. You'll see on uh, the slope arrow that you mentioned in yep. uh, Those were uh, uh, established and discussed with him prior to, you know, back in February okay. uh, when we did this process. And they all were underneath the DEC requirements for the slope uh, for planning. Okay. Yeah, and the other conditions were stormwater management, which we've already gone over, proof, proof of insurance, which I'm sure they've given yep. Brian at this point, and then other stuff was final acceptance and review of submitted plans. So that's all building, building code um, review from right uh, for Brian. Well, that was actually done by Cliff before me. Okay, but uh, the contingent part was the fact that uh, several weeks ago and then was kicking in this meeting ultimately uh, Mrs. Wetzel brought the res check and the manual J which is an operational document to secure the fact that it complies with the energy code. As a matter of record the res check was submitted with the original sealed drawings for me back in was that February when that was submitted to me? Yeah. Yeah. February 24th. Yeah, yes. that's true. The, the res check was attached to those drawings when they were submitted. Uh, I reprinted and resealed the set of the rest check documents so that it could go to uh, Mr. Butler. Yeah, because he could not locate the ones that were originally submitted. In looking through that plan, I saw that, but I didn't recognize what it was when you asked for it, that it was already in there. So we went to Jim and got it. Well, in any event, we, we got it. Yeah, and it's not part of our review. No, so. I just wanted to let you know that yeah. that was the only hold up on getting the rest check document in for mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Butler. <clears throat> um, other questions from board members? Sure. So this is a question for Brian. Mm -hmm. This is section B of section 5.3 of the zoning law, which speaks to the stream quarter overlay. Right. And it says <clears throat> where more than 75% 75 of the parcel of land is covered by the stream quarter overlay, Correct. which is this case. Yes. Uses pursuant to table one shall be allowed on up to 25% of that land. Correct. So with this, can you show me with this description here that this complies with that exception? Well, that basically uh, the information on the front says there's 25% of the total land. We ha I haven't determined yet which the, the house itself and the uh, septic system, um, we could garner some information from that because it's almost identical. The septic field is at 10,264 square feet and the house itself is actually the dwelling foundation plus 10% just for working around that house while during a construction. That uh, the two are very close to this 13,600. So they're very close to that, which means that the design as they have it could work within the 25% of space total, left. Total disturbed area is 24.6% of the lot. So that's all of disturbed area, not even just right. The, so it seems to be under 25%. But, but I'm not sure this speaks about the lot. I think it speaks to the 
to the um, parcel that's in the riparian buffer in the in the section that's the uh, stream corridor overlay and not for the total lot. Thank you. Can you tell me if this if is I'm reading so I can see what you're, right. what you're reading? Excuse me? Can you just give me the section number so I'll know what you're reading? So this is section 5.3. Okay. Which talks about stream portal overlay. And then that's subsection B. Okay. Right. That's also on the first page of this analysis. Right. Uh, under asset one. Yeah. So I determined that the site within the riparian buffer restriction was close to 95% of the of the site, mm -hmm. which you know is well above the 75% needed to basically kick in this meeting tonight. <laughs> So Don, your reading section B. Uh, Five point three, section B, where more than seventy five percent of any parcel of land. So that'd be the parcel of land. That's the whole parcel. So we're in. 75% of any parcel of land is covered by the stream corridor overlay, which it is. Uses pursuant, pursuant table one shall be allowed on up to 25% of that land, which would be the full parcel, mm -hmm. right, upon abbreviated site plan approval by the review board. So if, from... from if, I, if I read it that way, then I, I agree with your calculation. Okay. So then, yeah, I mean, area disturbed, not even just building was just under, but under 25%. So that's an exception. Yeah. Yeah. I think the reader's aid box, the last paragraph really yeah. explains that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Other questions? Uh, the only other thing I don't really understand are the what were wells and what were um, right. former wells, I guess. Well, but, technically, it doesn't matter whether it's a former well or it's a current well. Okay. If it was dug as a well, the rules and uh, health department regulations require you to stay a certain distance away from them. And that's what uh, the engineer had. Okay, and there it's a hundred feet, I'm assuming, from these lines. That's right. Okay, good. I just didn't quite understand that. There were a couple of we things. Can't assume that they're never going to be used, even if they aren't today. Because they're not properly abandoned, then they have to be assumed that somebody can use it. So that's how we establish the setback and for the I didn't see where the well on the property above that was located. Is it? I think they're there? all on there. The, the house are going to be to the south. Right. Well, we're, we're, the septic system is well, farther well away. beyond just, just the, from the property line to where the septic system is from the property right. on the south. That's well over the 100 feet. Over yeah. 150 feet. <laughs> yeah, the, the one the one circle that isn't identified but is pretty clear as well is that two possible locations for the well for the Wetzels right. are identified right. on the plan, but they have not. You can see by calculation that they qualify, but they haven't been circled out like the other wells from neighboring properties. So Bruce, is that those two for them? For them, I don't or, see any. And that's plenty far away. That doesn't okay. Okay. Happen. Because it's, it's even further, you know, it's a lot further than this. So it's actually plenty of water. And I didn't see a floodplain, but I didn't look at a flood map at all. So this is not located in special flood this, hazard zone or anywhere else. No. Basically, the pink, pink shows similar to that. It's located right here map. on this, this bank. 
This would be Brooklyn, Brooklyn Road, right? and this is that element that comes yeah. out here like this right here. You can see it. Gotcha. That's the property line. Yeah, everything actually happens on the other side of the cliff, you might say. And right here is the is the falls itself. Mm -hmm. So then it drops way down here, but so does the site at that point. And that's why uh, the engineers have located their septic system, but they've also created more of a, a gentle slope here so they can get their septic system in and still comply with the restrictions of the stream itself. Yeah. Just for you, just so you know, the illustration mm -hmm. that was attached to this plan, this is the this is the preliminary FEMA manual mm -hmm. that, that is likely to take effect early next year. So that's what's represented here, not the older sure. six mile creek mapping. Mm -hmm. Good. Other questions, concerns? So when I read this, we're talking about a buffer area. And it says the function of the buffer area is to protect the physical and ecological integrity of the stream, to protect the enhancement of the native vegetation. Is there, what are the plans to protect the buffer area that was that existed and uh, maybe enhance it with any disturbance that's taken place? Yes, I'd give that over to the architect. Oh, I would. Uh... The only disturbances we're looking at right now are in that area is going to be where the septic system and stuff is, where the house itself is located. We actually relocated the, the footprint of the building a little bit as a result of a conversation that I had with Mr. Hunter. Uh, we shifted it just a little bit over so that it avoided one of the contour lines that he was uh, concerned with, so it would avoid potentially doing any disturbance in that area. Uh, other than that, uh, the silt fences will be put up manually. Uh, there's no machines or machinery required to do that. The only machinery will be what's required to uh, create the septic system, this, this leaching field, uh, distribution boxes, I think, for that in the structure itself. And those are, are not an area that's uh, in a wetland or uh, subject to any fauna issues or Florida issues. So anything in the riparian border is Staying the way it is. Additional questions? Mm -hmm. um, maybe a little uh, <clears throat> straw, what do you call it? Straw poll? Like, um, I think you feel like. like do you feel like any additional materials are needed this time? No. As far as elevation lines, was there any change in the elevation as far as on that side? Do to, to do what? Elevation lines from mm -hmm. the stream bank to the building site? Uh, no, actually, those these are the actual uh, existing and proposed timers are all on the C102 drive. Uh, so you can see where the alterations were, uh, but most of those are in, uh, adjustments in order to do the septic system. See those right here. The original ones came around this way, right? And these are connecting up with the with the, the existing lines that are at Brookendale, but they push this down a little bit uh, to give create more of a plateau for the septic system. Mm -hmm. Right, so this is was existing. This is all existing, and this continues on down this way. They just <laughs> pulled that in there. Uh, if you've seen the existing, there was an existing, you might call it a drainage source right. way over right. the original Brookendale, yep. and that's where they put in these catch basins and brought it down further, and then they took it out to the creek. So it's the same water, it's just been relocated so this plateau could be extended for the septic system. Gotcha. And in theory, that also reduce any runoff that was going through that uh, soil at this point in time. This will all be right. conducted through pipe work now. Yeah, because that was a pretty wet place. Yep.
Uh, Bruce, you can any need for additional materials? No, just need to digest it a little bit more, I guess. We should discuss it some. Okay, right. Dom. Dom, are you feeling need for additional material? So when I read um, the section 5.3, which talks about stream quarter over overlay and what the purpose of this section is about, and I read um, under G2 talking about buffer area and its function, I would like a description <coughs> from the engineer or the applicant about how they're mitigating the impacts of this project and protecting the buffer area. I was talking about vegetation. Um, what, what's, do you know what the vegetation is on the site? It's all it's mostly scrub. Uh, there's a lot of thorny uh, uh, rather than bushes and uh, kind of aster type plants in there. A lot of, uh, it's heavily uh, uh, blanketed with uh, detritus, so there's not an awful lot of growth within most of it. Uh, it's just piles and piles and you know, many inches of uh, decayed leaves and, and whatnot. So nothing's really growing in there actively on its own, uh, which is why I said that we basically try to stay out of that area as much as we can. Uh, the little bit of disturbance we do need to do is again, so we can meet the requirements of the study. Uh, but in those areas we go up there right now, uh, there's rock, <coughs> there's uh, a lot of leaves, there's scrub brush stuff, which is Actually, not very nice to walk through, I'll tell you that much. Uh, I've been two or three times already. Uh, but other than that, there's no uh, no valuable fauna or flora on that. Who's the value to humans or to the wildlife? Both. There's there's uh, very little uh, active uh, animal uh, tracks on the property at all, uh, which means that they're not foraging there at this point in time, probably because it's nestled between too many houses. And it's better than stuff. Good thing only when I eat. Uh, give me stuff from my middle of that. Yeah, it's true. There's not much of anything of any quality for food wise there as far as the growth of any kind of plants. There's a lot of rock. Right. I don't know if you're along when you're building that bank, you can probably put something in there, well, correct? Pardon? Well, since you're developing somewhat of a bank there, you could put some. Oh, uh, well, there, we will certainly be stabilizing it and make sure it doesn't create any runoff in the stream, absolutely. You know, the, whether it's uh, meadow grass or whether it's uh, the pine grass, or whether it's, you know, uh, uh, other kinds of things, you know, that's, that is part of the restoration program after we do the construction. That's also one of the reasons for the silt fences is to make sure that we don't contaminate anything down the hill from the diversity. Something that might be helpful. Um, almost assuredly, the committee has probably heard from one or more neighbors over the course of the last few weeks that they were concerned about stuff going on. Yeah, actually better. No, no. Quite some time ago, I met with Mr. Wetzel and Mrs. Wetzel, and I looked over the site. And in addition to a lot of scrub, there were some dead trees, and there were also some piles of, of gravel and other things. I don't know if at one time that was used by the town just to deposit stuff, but there was certainly uh, there's gravel over by, I think, the uh, east side of the site. Um, but at any rate, um, I had authorized them to clean up the site. You know, we call it clearing and grubbing, get rid of the, the dead stuff and whatever. Partially so that, <clears throat> you know, both Mr. Drew and Mr. Herrick and, and myself could actually see more clearly what the contours of the site actually were and issues that were going to possibly be raised, uh, knowing that when Mr. Herrick produced his drawing that there was there was an amount of fill that was going to be put in there to support the, the septic systems. 
Um, <clears throat> but I did hear uh, at some point that there were a couple of healthier trees that were taken down in the process of the clearing and grubbing. And uh, I later found out that those trees were also in the area where the septic system was ultimately going to go. So <clears throat> whether it was a healthy tree or a dead tree, it doesn't really matter at that point because that is something that it was gonna be scheduled for removal. Uh, I did not make that clear in my initial instructions to uh, Mr. Wetzel. And so he, he, he has done this kind of work for many years, building septic systems for other people. He knew what needed to go. He took it down and that uh, raised some, some hackles, you might say, or concern by neighbors that, you know, things are just being wiped out, helter-skelter. Uh, I talked to him additionally at the, about that, and he really cut back on his cleaning of the site until we had this meeting and he had a clear direction on how to go. So I, I take responsibility for the vagueness of clearing and grubbing when other people were probably alarmed needlessly. There's there's a bit of a latitude when a person is developing a single parcel for a single but for a residence. We're not looking at putting up, you know, a 7-Eleven there. We're talking about the fact that people have the right to do certain things on their property. And particularly since they, he had the support and also some direction from his engineer on what needed to be done, he, he started doing that. And then we had to pull him back off the site and have him slow down. So it's, uh, they've been very patient. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, they, they certainly earned the right after looking at the old uh, the stormwater management re restrictions and requirements versus the new ones that uh, they found that their site wasn't something that they could could work with given the additional restrictions that the new buffer um, put on their property. I have a question for Brian. As uh... An application has been submitted for a review to site plan review. And is there a fee that's associated with it? And if so, has it been collected? Uh, no and no, because I didn't request it at this point because of the um, less than a half an acre uh, disturbance uh, for the actual project. I thought, first of all, that this is brand new to me as well as others. A review meeting was justified without getting all the bells and whistles covered because this is new territory for all of us. Particularly for me, since I'm just interim code officer, you know, and I had to get up to speed very rapidly on the new zoning and, and at the same time try to quell the concerns of the client here that he thought that he had approval to go go forward with this before the zoning was even in place. And then we put the skids to him and then he has a whole new set of requirements that he now has to address. I think his engineer and his architect have done a credible job in shoehorning this into a very difficult site. And, uh, but still, you know, I felt it was prudent to get them here tonight to address their work. And I haven't, I haven't really found any fault with their work. So <clears throat> it's good that we have this discussion round table, you might say, tonight to see if we can give them some direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, anything else? I, I do think this is when, when we were writing the, the law, the zoning law, this is exactly the situation that we were talking about, is what does somebody do when a huge piece of their property is in thing? And we came up with these figures at 100%, and I think the architects did a good job of shoehorning this in. Mm -hmm. So it was exactly what we talked about as we were going through. And I'm very happy to see it doesn't look to be on this that it's in the flood zone, which is really nice. So. 
Yeah, well, that opens a whole other yeah. can of worms. Exactly. Um, uh, so, it, yeah, I mean, I feel like my questions have been answered. I feel like, for the most part, I have all the information I need, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not the only one on this board. Um, so, it sounds like an official application needs to be submitted, an official fee needs to be submitted, um, because it was kicked to us and go through abbreviated site plan review. Um, do we want to ask for description of vegetative restoration or enhancement in buffer area? I would like to see the I'd like to see that part of the, of the law be addressed by the applicant. Okay. Anything else? Otherwise, assuming we get those for the next meeting, then it can be a one meeting deal and we will have received all the materials requested. It will be a full application and we can make a decision at that meeting. Yep. That's how uh, this, everybody... this is supposed to work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just checking to make sure everybody's feeling good about that process. Great. Did you say you uh, requesting an application form? Just requesting an application for the abbreviated site plan review. Okay. B for the abbreviated site plan review. And a description or narrative addressing uh, section, section G uh, with the uh, um, description of vegetation, vegetative restoration, and it's meant to buffer. Great. I'd probably ask the questions. Yeah. If we go through and do this application, get the key in for that, what is the timeline? That you're looking at for to have that reviewed? We would be meeting on the second Tuesday. Typically, we, we are meeting once a month. Second Tuesday in so August. Second Tuesday in August. The only reason I ask is the, the construction of the uh, area that we're doing a project in an area like this might be impacted the longer we wait. So I'd like to take a look at seeing how we might be able to expedite that if any way is possible. Do you have a special meeting if the board is open to it? Um, I'm not here at the end of this week, but I am the rest of March. Of March. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be a trick. First time you're here, but... yeah. I believe this is July. <laughs> yes. Who never knows. You're not here the rest of this week. Ultimately, the, a lot of the decision making process in the new zoning is kicked back to the ZEO or the CEO. The question here is if that information is provided, um, is it something that, uh, that the ZEO has the authorization to approve? Is it, it's for a single family residence and often you know, it doesn't require that. I mean, the question here is, even reading the current requirement, what is the actual basis for an abbreviated site plan review for a single family residence? This is not affecting the floodplain at all. This is that right here? Yep. It's in a, it's in a stream forward or overlay district. So it requires an abbreviated okay. site plan review. Okay. Yeah. And then any abbreviated site plan review requires approval by the board. Okay. Um, uh, unless, um, unless somehow we want to make certain conditions, but if you want to see, yeah, um, if you want to review, well, so I'm I'm fine with having a special meeting, but we, yeah. but I'm not fine with receiving the information ten minutes before the meeting. Sure. So. One more question to the architect. Uh, the blue line that's on this map uh, uh, kind of more or less describes where you're going to be put, Phil. Uh, that's uh, that's my blue. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want him to be put on the line. Okay, well, this line area is yes. That for just calculation purposes for these statistics. Okay. I looked at the amount of contour changes, and I just put that in there enough so that I could do a. You know, a quick, quick calculation of the additional disturbance on the land to find out where that stood relative to the half acre. Okay. Well, with this fill at flood stage, will that change the direction of water? No. That's all occurring outside the. Uh, okay. You know. 
it's occurring over in here. Right. And that's basically, I mean, this, this site is excellent with regard to the floodplain itself because everything is going in the other it's south. Um, and it's on a plateau. Mm -hmm. um, after the after the falls, I would say what, uh, Kim and Martha, is it a 30 foot drop there? 25 foot drop? It's pretty steep. <laughs> Well, there is no uh, yeah, the flood elevation drops. Yeah. Above the falls, just above the falls, it's 914.8. Below the falls, it's 904.5. So it's, uh, okay, it's a 10 foot drop. It's not as big as okay. Um but this is not an area that's between the rock that it's basically been cut out of at that side that this is not an area that is prone to flooding. And uh, the fill that they put in there will not divert walk, any water where it shouldn't be. Um, that was taken care of by the two uh, storm drains that they put in here so that this would remain all dry. And they caught that from Brooklyndale Road. Both of these, they bring it over here and they take it down and put it in the creek. Yeah. Are these storm drains public or are these private? We know it. They're, they are draining the public uh, stormwater right now, and we are just kind of reconducting that, that stormwater runoff that's already occurring through those swales down to the piping. So these are not, these will be privately owned and not part of a public infrastructure. That's what you're saying. That's pretty much what it is. I mean, yeah. he's going to put the piping I'm just asking. In, and he's going to put the piping in for his own benefit. Uh, but it's also going to benefit the town uh, because it's going to take care of some storage. No, that's going to or counter. Maintained by by the by the property owner. Okay. Well, um, uh, as far as special meeting, are people available the twenty third to meet this one today? I am. I have to look at my calendar at the home, but I think so. And I looked at the town and I don't see anything else on the 23rd. So, oh, good. That's what I was going to check next. Okay, seven o'clock. Yeah, well, I just want to make sure we have corn. And since Sue's not here and Jack's online, are you messaging? <laughs> yeah, great. I'm old fashioned, mine's on the calendar at home. So, 23rd, you said? Yeah. So, I would go on the 23rd in the evening. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's say 7 p.m. on the 23rd. When will we then, When will we require the information? Well, I was going to say by the end of this week. No. We so, then we have 10 days to review. We should have a day. Sure. Yeah. Sounds great. So, can, can we, if we have a special meeting on the 23rd, 7 p.m., uh, can we have the application and the fee and a, a response to the um, uh, vegetation restoration by the end of this week? Is this unreasonable? We can have a document emailed to me. I will get those in process for students. Okay. Yeah, Brian. Yep. Brian, do you have the application? Oh, not on me. I don't know about it. <laughs> It'll be the first. I'll I'll have to, we'll one. probably have to create one. But do we have a fee? Yeah. We'll have to make one. Yeah. We'll right. make one. Well, then let me know. Do we have a fee? <laughs> okay. And you'll create Wait, a fee tomorrow. Wait, there's no fee. What's that? You'll create a fee tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess. Yeah. Uh, you think we have one? We'll look, we might. I, we I might. thought I saw one. Okay. But... I'll check the fee schedule. Okay. I have no idea. Yeah, okay. I, didn't, I didn't see anything on. I have this fee schedule right here. You did look at it. I oh, didn't see anything yeah. on there that's an abbreviated. Okay. Basically, they got a basic SWIP and a full SWIP, but the SWIPs don't come into play here. We're not even going to go down that road. Okay. Anything else? Otherwise, I'm done with this project. Yeah. Okay. So, is it clear? Are you guys clear on what needs to happen? By the end of the week, so we can have a special meeting on the 23rd, so we can officially review and approve the project. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll probably check that. Okay, anything else? 
Cool. Then um, there oh, is. Yeah, you said a couple of other things. Yeah, there's a couple other housekeeping things I just want to go over. <laughs> So, no, you're welcome to thank leave you. if you want. Yep. Thank you. Thanks for coming by. Thanks Very helpful. Okay. Good. Nice to see you. David, did you get one of these? I did that. I have an English one. I should get one to do too. Um, I just want to ask the board if anybody wants to look at the site. So, oh, I've driven by the site and looked yeah. at it a couple of times because. You know, Why not? Because it's between the market and the sheep, yeah. so it's a you got to go buy it. It's a you got to go buy it, right? right? I mean, it's a creek. <laughs> it's a creek in a whole different body. It's all sheep, flat stone. Yeah. I, oh, I, yeah. Anywhere. Yeah. And when the water goes down through there, it does go to that side. My cousin lived in the next house right next to it, so I know what water does there. I'm just saying. And this it seems fine, but I think it would be worth just taking a look just to refresh, especially if you want to talk about vegetation. Um, I was I was curious about the vegetation too, actually. Matter of fact. Is that Jack? That's Jack. Jack. Mr. Thank Jack. I uh, I fixed my mic at the expense of getting kicked, but I am here. <laughs> Thanks. Um Okay, so moving on, um, Mark sent me an email about um, Chet and Mark from Distributed Thumb. Stop by to give you an update. And Tony Tavelli. Uh, so a couple of years ago, a few years ago? At least. Oh, no, yeah. Three or four four years, years ago, yeah. we sort of sort of saw the beginnings yeah, of three years of a solar farm at Tony Valley's. I don't know. Yeah, if you remember. So um apparently it's coming back. Um so they are working on it's been on hold, but they're putting it in motion again and they expect to submit their application materials by September for that project. Nothing to do yet. I wanted to alert pending review for the project. Uh, they will be doing survey work this summer for the application. Um, and yeah, I would say if they, it might be worthwhile for them to come in and do a discussion slash- With you guys. Yeah, sketch plan type thing with did us. Did they, they do that before with you guys? They didn't have. No, they just didn't have that discussion. No. So we, went, we can get a complete application. Okay, that's with right. The board. Okay, thanks with the town board. Was it okay? Only oh, I don't know. Oh, they did like a sketch plan or something for you. Because we have, I have a folder. Well, uh, you were dealing with a map and stuff. Yeah. Okay. You were dealing with the solar law at that time. Well, it was before the solar law. Yeah. So yeah, okay. but they, was that what you were talk, talking about? Yes. Yeah. When they, it was they came before we started working on the solar law. Okay. That's right. <clears throat> so, so I think it'd be good for them to. Good, I agree. You know, potentially give us what they have yeah. ahead of time, and then yeah. let's have a little discussion. Yeah, uh, make sure that they're on the same page before they really submit. Before an September, right? Yeah, yeah. But if they really want to submit an application in September, right. it should be before that, which means it should that be next month. Yeah. yeah. And can I suggest, because I met with them also, that we ask them to, for your sake, to clarify how they're in conformity with the solar law, um, just to save you guys a step, because they've done that work. Mm -hmm. And that should be easy for them to lay that out. Yeah. I can read the solar law. Well, yeah. I should do that. Yep. So, so should I. <laughs> great, all that I wrote for. Okay, that's great. And where would this be? 76 Road. Oh. Yeah, Tony Valley. So, yeah, out 76 between. There's a small solar solar farm there. That's so, it. That's it. No, that's it. So, but it's that's teeny cool. tiny. It's I'm further than that? that? Yeah, it's past, it's closer to Speedsville. Oh, okay. I don't know exactly where. And it's on both sides of the road, isn't it? No. It's, it's probably, only, yes, but the, 
the field is not. Oh, the field. It's only going to be on the north side of the road, but it's good. it's going to involve properties that span the road. Okay. So there's going to be okay. a subdivision process. Too. So. Um, subdivision okay. process grades. I guess we can do this. Um, other thought I had another question about procedural stuff. I don't. What was the first thing you said about signs? So somebody about signs. Yeah. yeah. What? Uh, two people before Tony said somebody had submitted something. It was the solar. Oh. It's the solar people that had submitted on for Tony's land. Uh. Hey, Craig. I, yeah. I don't know if it's the right time, but I wanted to about the meeting. Um, no, oh, you want to change the meeting in general. I'm just going to see if that would work. Um, right. So, uh, Alvin has town board meeting in Richmond on two, second Tuesday of the month. Uh -huh. So, I was, I'm hoping not to be clerking this meeting usually. <laughs> really? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I was going to see. You're asking a lot. Um, <laughs> I don't, at this point, I don't remember what people's oh, okay. restrictions were. Um, I think you would start it with the third Wednesday, right? Yeah, it was either the third Wednesday or third Tuesday or something like that. Oh, so um, third Tuesday is out for me. Right. I think that's what I started with. And that was And I idea. think the third Wednesday. Um, third Wednesday now is board meeting night. And the yeah. first Thursday was out yeah. for me. So yeah. what about fourth Tuesday? The fourth Tuesday. Um, is fine for me. I have something earlier, but it's 4.30 to like 6. So that's fine. Um, in general, how does the fourth Tuesday work? Probably in okay. general? Sure. Yeah. Well, and, uh, and I kind of like that because it actually lines up with our um, our special meeting on the 23rd of this month is the fourth Tuesday. Uh -huh. So then for August, we Reset. could just change it to the fourth Tuesday and mm -hmm. kind of keep going from there if that works. That'd be great. Okay. That works for me as the lowly alternate. Awesome, Jack. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. We that is important. Awesome. We appreciate that. Is lonely or lonely? <laughs> well, he's lonely right now. Yeah, are you lonely, Jack? Lonely. <laughs> my my wife is sitting next to me, so no, I am quite comfortable. Oh, okay. good. Good. Nothing like a board meeting to spice up the evening. <laughs> I I have uh, my husband has to do Zoom board meetings, and I would never attend them. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. <laughs> Maybe that's because okay. we've been married for fifty four years. <laughs> okay. okay. So. Special, I guess I didn't have anything else. Special meeting. Yeah, so special meeting 23rd, and then we'll sort of stay on that schedule for August and so on and so forth as yeah. the fourth Tuesday. Um, unless something drastic. Yeah, we just have to work, work with Sue. Um, but it sounds like it works for most people. Um, Sue, I think, was pretty open. There was there was a couple days, but it wasn't the fourth <laughs> Tuesday. Um, so I think that works. I'm going to do it in the special minutes. Meeting we're going over the special meeting, we're just going over the this project and uh, additional stuff that they submit. Um, since it is our regular, if there's any other uh, any other items like I don't know procedural stuff, um, and it is good um, the application. Yeah. Let me know if you guys want to help put together an application for Thank you. review it, my up or okay. whatever. Yes. Um, I'm happy to do that okay. because because uh, we should have it for each of you know abbreviated site plan review, site plan review, which would be slightly yep. different, more elaborate, right? Um, and then special permits too, since they are yep. slightly different. Um, and fee schedule, which I'm not going to touch. I'll let you guys sort of handle that. Do we get to go board? Like to 
Tierra del Fuego or anything. <laughs> no. <laughs> just, just ask me. <laughs> so, question. question. Uh, uh, I'm not on the board, but I guess the question I have for myself and anybody in the future in the code office is your review meeting, if it's a regular meeting, something that you would likely have the code officer attending. Yeah. Good question. Yes, guidance for probably I would say probably. I mean, I, yeah, I can leave it a little up to the town board as far as you know. Technically, you're the code officer's boss. Well, I would say us. upon request is how yeah. I would put it. Depending on your okay. agenda, yeah, you yeah. always feel welcome to um, to request the code officer. Yeah, I or the town attorney. Right. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking about that too, but um, I, I would block it out in your calendar as long as you're here, but then whoever the code officer ends up being, hence his own make it work <laughs> oh, <you're gonna> make <laughs> it. Just... Too bad. <laughs> um, so in a lot of other municipalities, someone on staff is, there's a zoning person on staff. And yeah. staff yeah. You no, know, that's why I'm saying it, 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 it's sort of a regular thing. So do you think that you would need Brian for the special since he's done tonight. Um, probably it's a question, right? not. But yeah, I, I would, I would expect that, that I would be at that meeting because we're going to create the application, I would assume, and I'm the collector of all the stuff, I would assume, yeah. or the office is, I'm not me personally. Yeah. That, we, have, uh, we have stuff pretty much, right? Yeah. So we just need to create a form that they can check off. We we don't have the vegetation schedule. He's going to yeah. have. Oh right. So yeah. And and he and that's not anything that we have to define a schedule. I mean, they architects and engineers do it all the time. Yeah. Um, okay. That's a question. Yeah. As a community member who's directly impacted by this construction project, I own property next to this. Uh, to whom would I address my concerns about? The construction project, as well as my concerns with the uh, demeanor of Mr. Wetzel himself. Mm. Uh, well, you can certainly submit a letter to the review board. I will do that. Yeah. Because the matter is the one thing that people didn't bring up. You brought up just you know a little bit of stormwater mitigation. The fact of the matter is the way the drainage comes off of Endermark Road, everything at this point goes into one of the culverts that's going to be moved. The issue is the culvert is continually clogged, which means that everything ends up actually going into my garden. Uh, which has it previously contaminated my water. Uh, issue is, is that he's putting a leach field right next to it, and if the uh, the current culverts that they're proposed to move are not maintained, that means that I now have to deal with contamination from Vandermark Road as well as contamination from this leach field. Yeah, that would be very useful to know. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's Unfortunately, I did look into it, and a previous site plan review does not have. A, a public hearing. So typically with a site plan review, there is a public hearing, in which case you would stand up and say what you want. Uh, you can always submit a letter to the board. I think it's good having it in writing anyway. Um, so I would encourage you to do that. Also, I'd like to bring to note that uh, Mr. Wetzel was, uh, as a neighbor, extremely, I guess, will be the words of, uh, oh, adversarial, <laughs> disrespectful. Mm. Uh, many times I came home, actually, one time I came home, found him in the middle of my yard with the contractor talking about this project. He did not take it kindly to when I asked him to please not bring contractors into my yard without permission. Uh, then in January, I actually had to have the police removed from my property because he just happened to be skulking around at sunset in the middle of my yard with a metal detector. When we asked him what he was doing, uh, he said it went into an absolute tirade of expletives and accusations. Uh, including so much as uh, saying, accusing me of uh, tampering with survey pins and stealing, stealing survey pins. Uh, I asked him to please leave my property. He then threw a tantrum and said, You're not on my land. I always said, I'm not on your land. You're on my land. Mm -hmm. So he yeah, obviously seems to think that uh, part of my property is his. Uh, we had him removed by police. Uh, and since then, it's just been very adversarial. He likes to uh, just show up in the property lines, oftentimes at dusk with a chainsaw, just kind of trying to just, just pruning trees. He likes to patrol, looking for trouble. This is not the person that I would want to be in charge of the building project next to my house. Yeah. Especially with my daughter playing in the yard, 
especially if he's the one who's driving the excavator, and he seems to think that he owns my property. Those are my concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Have you, the road that you live on is a county road? I do live on county. Have you talked with the county engineers about your drainage issue? Oh, uh, we've talked to them many times. You see that louder? We've talked to them many times. And huh. what are they doing about the stormwater coming to out of your property? Uh, sometimes they talk about budget. Other times we managed to flag down a town truck, which actually managed to uh, <laughs> copy that a little bit as a favor and then saying this is a county thing. But oftentimes they see we don't have the budget for this. You know, we'll get into this road at this time. Hmm. Hmm. You own above the property or below it, towards the store? Close to the market. Because I would look in, be really seriously looking into that drainage because that's all rocked. I mean, I, my cousin lived in that house that you were living in now uh, for years. And I just know that that water coming off that side, because I lived on the other side of the creek, up past the next house up. And that stream that comes out of the other side at flood stage, when that's running full force, that's six by eight this way, which moves six mile creek that way until it hits the rock on this site on the other side. And then it goes that way and bounces out to the other side. But it does go down where that drainage. So I'm my thought was, is that drainage going to be still there at the first flood? because those pipes will be at that side. That's why I asked if somebody wanted to look at the site, just because it's been a while since I've been in there. But I did, I used to fish the stream all the time, and it just, it was, it's a very, it's a rock ledge. And it's a very wet area. And when, and it's all flat rock, and what can't go that way comes this way, and then bounce down over that ledge, through your side of your yard, and back that way. And those drainages are right there. An issue is, is that our water is uh oh it's, it's spring fed off of off of the hill. Right. Goes into a thousand gallon system that's in our yard. Right. Right. And if things start flowing, I mean we don't want to kind of put in and dig our own drainage to divert. But when things really start coming down off of Bender Mark, I mean it, it's really low when we be doing things out of our water. So ideally it would be taken into consideration with just exactly how the septic tank and the leach will be flowing as well. That's one less problem we have to do. My concern, like I said, would be those those looking to see where those pipes are now. Did they are they put in now or no? Not no, yet. Not another construction has gone forward yet. I hope we put them on hold until you know this was so. But it does bring up another question: is that if he is willing to put in these storm uh, drains, you know, as a mitigation me measure, and then get it out to the creek, um, is it something? since he's paying for the initial installation that the county or whoever maintains that road, Brooklyn Road, uh, Brookendale Road, they would be willing to take it over so that they would then keep those storm drains cleaned on a regular schedule. So that, um, that has happened several times in the town of Carolina where people are put in structures to manage surface water. And when they put the structures in, it's done at the expense of the contractor who's, or the applicant that's doing the work. But they also create an agreement that the town would, that they would de dedicate that to the town, mm -hmm. which means the town board has to be willing to accept it. Well, that's why I'm asking the question yeah. really now is that, and I, if that's the case, I would want to get the town County road. County, that's county. what I would want to get whatever agency is responsible to get them into the discussion during the design phase. Well, I think, yeah, any kind of alteration of water going that way would have to be, that the county would have to be involved mm -hmm. in that for sure. And Mr. Herrick, and that I think he would welcome it if he hasn't already had that conversation because. If you remember when we saw the very first plan, you thought there was an additional swale or creek there coming down. And yeah. basically what it was is that was just taking off seasonal water from the road and then the other side of the road, one of the wells was pumped in there too. 
they're actually taking that and they're turning it 90 degrees, taking it down to a lower location and bringing it out to the creek. But I would certainly entertain having the county look at this and saying, okay, well, you're at it, make it a bigger, you know, sketch basin or, or other kind of means. You know, it's, he's talking about seasonally that it needs a big pipe. We, want to, we don't want to put in a 10 inch pipe when right. a 15 or 18 inch pipe is needed to yeah. solve the problem. Right. And I would think it would also have to be definitely taken into consideration the distance that that pipe is going to go so that it doesn't affect this gentleman's property. Right. Can, can I just ask also whether, Brian, whether the the fill that they're going to bring in for the separate system is going to raise the elevation, which would really affect the drainage coming down that mark. Uh, I think that their intention is to divert all of that and take it, we'll say, westerly down to this gentleman, you know, right along the property line where this gentleman has, and then basically turn it over and take it all the way to the creek. Uh, but it's something I think that uh, there's opportunity here in time to get the county involved on saying, okay, is this, if this is something that we're willing to accept to improve a condition that exists right now, what do they have to have in the discussion to make sure that they're happy with what they're going to inherit? Yeah. And I think I, if I were you, I would also talk to Dan Klein. Can you wrap about this? That's a good idea. Yeah, uh, it is. So would it make sense to send just an uh, email that it just uh, covered up as well? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I would specifically ask Dan for his help with the highway department because not only is he your rep, but he's the county chair. He's sure. the county chair, which is quite handy. <laughs> <laughs> Politically speaking. <laughs> I mean, the good thing is at this point in time, anyways, I think it reflects on your discussion, is that the owner, Mr. Wetzel, is willing to pay for this right. to improve the situation. Right. But we don't want to just move the situation further down I agree. the hill. We want right. to get it all the way to the creek and resolve it so that it, it doesn't create a problem yeah. you know, seasonally or mm -hmm. three years down the road even. It seems so odd that that's a county road. Is that because it was? It was. It is, yeah. It's, yeah. There were several discussions about swapping it out, but they didn't. They weren't fruitful. It wasn't a good enough deal. It wasn't a good enough deal. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I would just respond to your comments that, unfortunately, because the stormwater law is not triggered by this project, the review board can't get involved. And the code officer can't get involved. But the other folks that we've mentioned, the county and so on, should be involved. Right. And that's, I think, where you have to take it. Yep. Other issues you can bring to us, but we unfortunately, this project is too small to trigger that. Well, I figured I would at least show up to the meeting to bring this up just because it seems like it's something that was overlooked in all of their It's yep. just one side of the road doesn't give the elevation for the other side. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think the Dan would be very helpful. Yeah. Anything else? Can we adjourn the meeting? Move to adjourn. Do I have a second? All in favor? All right. Excellent. Absolutely. <laughs> Love your enthusiasm. Yeah. You were waiting Love for it. <laughs> Your comments that couple trees should take a dollar of where they set the system we going to be. I believe so. I, I wasn't ready to do it. My perspective, they have a picture of what I'm